It's been long discussed that low rate of women's participation at work is resisting India's economic growth. In fact, not even a third of women in India do step out for work or employment opportunities. In fact, uh, in a conversation that we had recently, it was found that if, if women were at par with men in terms of economic opportunities and labor force participation rate, India would gain at least 25 to 30% of its GDP. So if women are not gainfully employed, what exactly are they doing throughout the day? Well, I am at the IIT Delhi's Transportation Research and Injury Prevention Center and I have with me Professor Rahul Goyal uh, who teaches here, who is a scholar here and he will tell us he actually has done a study on uh, gender differences in mobility in India uh, that may provide us answers to a lot of these questions. So welcome to the print uh, Professor Rahul. So let's begin this conversation. Um, so. Uh, could you elaborate on the key statistical findings of your mobility research? What exactly did you find when you were researching on how many women or men go out of their houses? Yeah. Uh, Nikhil, before I start, I do want to say that uh, as a male, uh, my understanding of gender is going to have some limitations. So I don't want to go beyond, uh, beyond what I know really well. All right. So. My research area is transportation. Mm -hmm. We look at how people travel on a daily basis. And uh, what I have, just to give you an international perspective. So when we look at how people travel on a daily basis, like for example, going to work, going to school, going to shopping, that varies by gender groups. So women often tend to work closer to home. Uh, they are more responsible for household chores. So they are, uh, they are more responsible for taking care of kids. So the kind of trips they make uh, on a daily basis are different from men. But the research in my, in my study, what I have looked at is far more fundamental. So wha what I'm looking at is whether on a given day an individual goes out of the house or not. And when we look at that at the population level, we call it the mobility rate. So what is the percentage of population that reported going out of the house at least once mm -hmm. when you surveyed them? So what I find is that uh, for the urban India that my analysis uh, just focused on urban India that more than 50% of the women reported that they did not step out of the house uh, on the given day. This compares to only about 14% uh, for men. So half the women said they did not, did not step out of the house. Um, what's interesting is that when we look at these numbers, compare these numbers internationally, this is rare. This never happens. So the percentage of men and women saying that they do not step out of the house on a given day is almost the same. And the reason they don't step out of the house is uh, multiple. For example, uh, they needed to take care of somebody uh, who is sick. They needed to take care of themselves if they are sick, for example, or disability. And uh, what's interesting is when you look at, the, so I'm telling you this percentage for the whole population, but this mobility rate varies drastically over age. So basically, uh, when uh, girls uh, are adolescents, that's when their mobility rate uh, starts plummeting and it becomes very low when they are in their mid 20s. And it sort of remains at the same level uh, throughout their age. But for men, there's no such variation. So they, they remain at a very high level of mobility throughout the age. So, yeah. So, like you said that women step out or girls step out for schooling when they are young. But when they exit the education system, they, their movement outside the house drastically changes. So this brings us to our next question that after getting formal education, why is it the case that there is a considerable mobility gap between men and women? Uh, could you yeah. elaborate on that? So I think, uh, look, the, uh, the work done by Professor Aspini Deshpande that has clearly, uh, that has made it clear that women do want to get into workforce if they are given an opportunity if there are jobs out there uh, so clearly their aspirations so when when girls are growing up they do want to uh, uh, they do want to do their schooling they do want to do their colleges so that's not that's not going away but i think what's happening is that a lot of constraints that are uh, going to come into their life that will constrain their mobility comes later in their life for example when they get married uh, when they have children for example uh, when they have household chores to take care of. So th those are the things that take place in their lives uh, after marriage. 
we know uh, for example by the work done by dr s anukriti that uh, women who live with their mother in law has uh, lower mobility rates uh, for example we know from my my own work that women who live with infants uh, they do not step out of the house as much as women who live with older children so so that's that explains so that so do you think that the investments that both government and private individual make on women's education if they don't step out for work or they don't step out at all like you said is it wasted opportunity so i think uh, that that investment should go on i mean uh, remember education uh, educating a woman does far mo- uh, you know far many things to the society than than just uh, of course uh, the employment but i think what needs to be done along with that investment in education is policies that will encourage women to step step out of the house so uh, for example there has to be uh, for example we know from from the work that i just mentioned that having an infant in the house for example uh, reduces your probability to step out of the house so we need to have institutional support for uh, child care for example uh, we know uh, for example the the access to appliances so women who use mechanical washing machine are more likely to step out of the house uh, women who have uh, maids to do their uh, cleaning are more likely to step out of the house of course uh, not everybody will have access to it but but this is i mean this is just to say that uh, all the investment that takes place early on in the life should also should also be accompanied by other policies that make it convenient for women to go out so like you said that women uh, are not stepping out of their homes whether educated or not educated could you tell us what exactly are they doing in the citadels of the housing so uh, there are three there are multiple domains under which uh, the time use survey data set that i was using uh, so this is the ministry of statistics or uh, nso yes so the national statistical uh, organization hmm. that has uh, conducted this survey in 2019 hmm. this is for the whole of india and uh, they look at multiple domains under which different activities are conducted so there are three domains uh, which are drastically different the participation is drastically different between the two gender groups so one is employment activity mm. another is domestic activities domestic activities include like cleaning uh, making food uh, uh, and uh, washing clothes and the third domain is the child so care activities for example taking care of ch- children mm. uh, teaching them or taking care of an elderly or sick mm. so so what we see is that women uh, women part, for example if you look at the 25 to 44 age group uh, 25 because by that time most uh, women are out of the education if you look at that age group those women contribute on an average about more than 8 hours of domestic and caregiving activities and that number for women is less than less than an hour so more than 8 times of uh, uh, you know duration hmm. uh, that women are engaged in so in, why in do you think like women, uh, men do not contribute to household chores the way women do absolutely not i why, think this why, why don't i, do I think this is a serious problem and i think uh, the gender gap in household activities that we see in india is quite quite high compared to me- rest of the part of uh, rest of the world mm. and i think uh, the n- if you if you look at the numbers mm. of how ma- how w- how much duration uh, how much men contribute to these activities like uh, domestic activities or caregiving activities it is it is uh, it is uh, it is almost shameful and i think there is a problem th- of course this is this is a this is a social norms issue that me- that women are sub- when are mm. expected to do uh, these activities do and i think there is also a problem in how boys are being raised okay i think uh, i think uh, you know boys are not being involved in in these activities and so growing up they do not expect to uh, contribute to any of these activities mm. and look the the mobility rate that i was uh, that, that i was saying that i am looking at in my study mm. you can see that women who uh, engage more and more in domestic activities or more and more in care giving activities their likelihood to go out of the house reduces mm. so they are because they are doing so many activities at home they mm. they are constrained by their presence at presence at home so they can't take up activities outside home 
so if i had to ask you for example you were saying that the rate of men doing the household domestic work is low could you cite some examples of the countries that we can compare to that okay in this particular country or in this particular region of the world men provide per percentage of men who provide a uh, care giving or domestic works uh, so i mean the the very obvious examples are uh, from western europe hmm. i mean we we know that uh, there is far more gender e equality it's still not gender equal but there is far hmm. more gender equality in uh, in how couples share uh, their uh, house household chores hmm. but if within within low and middle income countries also there is far more gender equality in this aspect in sub saharan africa there is far more gender equality in this aspect in south east asia hmm. so south asia does turn out to be uh, does turn out to be uh, an outlier in that sense so south asian men are more likely to not give care or domestic work compared absolutely. to men absolutely absolutely yeah that's fascinating so uh, let's suppose both men and women share their household chores um in in equally or maybe men do something and women contribute towards something how much do you think that could impact a woman's likelihood to at least step out of the house forget about working or employment so i mean it is so the work that i've done from that it is difficult for me to uh, quantify that hmm. but let me give you an example for example women who are engaged in uh, domestic activities i was saying like uh, cleaning or cooking for about 2 to 5 hours mm. they their likelihood to step out of the house reduces by 40% that's a huge reduction so suppose that that amount of uh, amount of work is been is being now shared by somebody else. it is definitely going to uh, improve their likelihood to be uh, to be out on the street and look I think I also want to talk about the fact that from from the work I have done mm. it seems that our mobility of women mm. is highly related to uh, what they're doing so for example women who are not in education or who are not going out to work their likelihood to go out of the house is about 30% so 30% mm. only 30% of the women who uh, do not work or who are not in education go out of the house but that percentage uh, uh, for women who either go or uh, go to work is about 80% so if a woman is employed 80% chance she will be going, going out the house and if she is not or she is not in education either then her likelihood is about 30% so what that means is that and this is this is also rare no nowhere else in the world does it happen that your likelihood to step out of the house depends on what you do people go out of the house all the time hmm. and what it means for india is that when women are deciding to take up jobs outside uh, outside home they are having to deal with two barriers so one barrier is to whether to step out of the house or not mm. and the second barrier is to find a job mm -hmm. so it's, it's 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 so both the challenges are coupled here so it won't be wrong to say that domestic work and caregiving which is non financial in nature and done mostly by women are an opportunity cost for women's participation at work absolutely and i think i think what's going on is that i mean i i shouldn't i shouldn't say too much uh, on this issue because i'm not an expert but look if your child care is is being done uh, at no cost by women in the household compared to uh, let's say uh, you paying for uh, child care in a uh, in a uh, what's called uh, developed country yeah in a, in a developed country for example then then i think the our real realization of uh, what what that activity that women are getting involved in uh, cost would be far greater but i think i think uh, because this is all being done uh, free free of cost we we often underestimate uh, its importance hmm. so if uh, both men and women share household chores their economic activities are likely to go up is what that what you think? I mean it it does seem so I mean the so. if if women are if women have less uh, activities to do at home mm. they are less constrained to be at home and when you are less constrained to be at home you can think about doing activities outside home but if you always have to think about going back to work and going back to home and take care of children or cook th that that is uh, that is difficult I think that 
quite sums up our conversation around the issue. How does making women more mobile impact their employment outcomes? Um, would certainly depend on a variety of factors which are presently being studied by scholars in India and around the world. Um, we'll bring you more to come on this subject in the time, of course. Uh, till then, stay tuned to the print.in.